In this lesson, we're going to learn how to add and subtract algebraic fractions when the denominators aren't the same. So you can see here we've got a 6 and a 3 on the denominator. Here we've got a 3 and a 4, and here we've got a 4 and a C. So you can't easily add these unless you make some small changes, so I'll show you how to do that. The first thing we need to do is try to find the lowest common denominator. So you, you're really just trying to change one or maybe both of the fractions so that you have the same denominator on the both of them. Now the lowest common denominator, that means you're going to be increasing the values that you have here using multiplication until each of these values are the same. So an example would be here we've got 6, we can easily turn this 3 into a 6 by simply multiplying by 2. So this one's an easy one. I'm going to multiply 3 by 2. Now what I'm doing to the bottom I must also do to the top and one way to look at this is when you're multiplying the top by 2 and the bottom by 2, if I make that a fraction, it's 2 over 2, I'm simply multiplying the value here of a third by the number 1. So I'm not really changing a third, but what I am doing is I'm going to make it right now into 2 over 6. So 2 over 6 is a third, it's just an equivalent fraction, it's a different type of the same fraction. So what I have, if I just move over here, I've got a over 6 plus, and if I multiply that 2 onto the 1, I get 2, and 3 times 2 is 6. So it's important you recognize what's going on here is I have exactly the same fraction. I've got a third, but I've just gone and multiplied it by 2 on the top and the bottom, and I've really just multiplied it by the number 1. 2 over 2 is 1, but I have something I can work with now. I've got 6 and 6 on the bottom, which is great, because what I can do is say a plus 2 all over 6. So it's all bound together there. For this question here, we can't simply multiply one fraction and get the same denominator occurring on both. Over here we saw that 3 times 2 gave us a 6, and that was great. But here if I times 3 by 2, it goes to 6, and it goes right past our 4. Same with 4. If I times it by 2, it goes to 8, and it's not going to help us here with that 3. So what we need to do is actually increase both of them until I hit what we call the lowest common denominator, and that's going to be 12. I'll show you why. What we've got here is multiples of 3. A 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. And then for 4, we've got 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24. We could keep going. But what you need to see here is that 12 exists on both of these multiples. And that's great because all we need to do now is multiply 3 by 4 to get to 12. So I'm going to put 4 times there. And here we multiplied 4 by 3 to get to 12. So over here, we multiplied 3 by 4. So I'm going to times this by 4. So I'll put 4 times there. And once again, you've got to do the same to the top, 4 times there. And over here, you're going to make this into 12 as well. So what are you multiplying 4 by to get to 12? It's 3. And once again, the same thing on the top. So I'm going to times that by 3 as well. Now, if you like, you can once again look at that as a fraction. You're just going to make it into a larger equivalent fraction where it's going to be 3 over 12. But 3 over 12 is 1 over 4. So you're not really breaking mathematics. You're just getting larger equivalent fractions. So over here, 4 times 2b is going to give you 8b. And we've got 4 times 3 is 12. And here, a plus 3 over 12. So now that your fractions, your denominators are the same, what you can do is just bring everything together. You've got 8b plus 3 all over 12, and that's your final answer. Now this one here looks a little bit tricky, but all we're really going to be doing is multiplying something onto each denominator so that they look exactly the same. So going back to that last fraction, what we did is we can see that 3 and 4, if we multiply those together, it gives us this value of 12. So that's sort of a shortcut that we could have used, and I'm going to apply that same principle here. If I multiply 4 by c, it becomes 4c. And if I multiply c by 4, it also becomes 4c. Now we have to apply these other principles here where I have to have the same thing multiplying on the top and the bottom. So I'm going to put c over c if you like, or it's just c times in the top and c times in the bottom. Over here, it's going to be 4 times in the top and 4 times in the bottom. And once again, you can think of that as timesing everything by 1 here 
and I'm timesing everything by one over here. It's not changing any of the mathematics. We're just getting different equivalent fractions. So if I just multiply that out, what we have is c times 1 is c over c times 4 is our 4c that we wanted. And that's good because over here, I'm going to put our 4c on the bottom straight away. We can see how they're lining up. 4 times c is 4c. And on the top, we've got 4 times 1 is 4. So last of all, we have this common denominator. It's the same denominator for both of them. So we can just join those together. Everything's going to be over 4c. And we have c plus 4. So for the fourth question here, we can see we need to multiply 3s and 5s by some different values to get them the same. If you look at your 3 times tables and your 5 times tables, you'll see that they meet up at the number 15. Now you can go right up to 30 or a larger number. It won't change anything. You'll still get the same answer, but you may need to cancel things out if you go too far. So it's a lot less working if you find that lowest common denominator, which in this case is going to be 15. So what do you multiply 3 by to get to 15? We need to multiply this by 5. So I'm going to put 5 times here, and same thing on the top, 5 times. Over here, this 5 is going to become 15 by multiplying it by 3, and the same with the top. Now the trick for things like this is to make sure you multiply these values across the entire numerator for each of these. So we're multiplying the entire top by 5 here, so it's not just 5 times d, but it's 5 times d plus 2. The same thing happens over here with that 3. It's going to multiply onto the d minus 1, not just one of those values, but both of them. So if we expand this out, what we're going to get is, what well, we can see we're going to have a common denominator straight away of 15. It's 15 here, 15 there. So I'm going to just put everything over 15. Over here we've got 5 times d, so it's 5d. 5 times 2 is plus 10. Then we have plus 3 times d. 3d. And here we've got 3 times minus 1. So we're going to get minus 3. And last of all, we have a few terms here that we can cancel out. We've got 5d plus 3d. That's going to give you 8d. And plus 10. Take away 3. It's going to give you plus 7. And that's all over 15. So there's your final answer for that one. Now this one here is going to be the hardest one we'll do, but it's the same principle. What we're going to do is multiply e plus 2 by something so it becomes similar to the side over here on the right. So what we'll do is we'll multiply this by the e plus 3 over here. So you get e plus 3 multiplying onto e plus 2. Now over here we've got an e plus 3, and the only way to make it the same as this side now is to multiply an e plus 2 on it. So just taking a step back, if you have a look at what we've got, it's e plus 3, e plus 2, and over here, e plus 3, e plus 2. Now up the top, if I multiply this side by e plus 3, I need to do exactly the same to the top. So e plus 3 is getting multiplied onto that 2 there. Now over here, what do you think we're going to multiply that minus 3 by? Well, we always have to multiply it by the same value that you've got multiplied on the bottom, so I'm going to times it by e plus 2. Now we just need to expand it out. So what we've got is 2 times e plus 3. And don't forget that that 2 is going to be multiplying onto each of those values. So what you end up with is 2e plus 6. And over here, we've got minus 3 multiplying onto each of these values. So it's minus 3 times e and minus 3 times plus 2. So we end up with minus 3e. And minus 3 times plus 2 is minus 6. And don't forget, it's all over that one value now of e plus 3, e plus 2. So we can cancel a few things out here. We've got 2e, take away 3e, so you've got minus e. And plus 6, take away 6, is 0. So it's minus e all over e plus 3, e plus 2.